Hi there, I'm Rexer and this is a quick build guide for my fake blood ascendant which is a cast when damage taken ward variant. These are all the points I will talk about in the video, so if you're only interested in a certain aspect, for example the flask sustain or how cooldown reduction works with the build, you can just check out the timestamps. The main concept of the build is that we permanently sustain 4 flasks without having to kill anything and we damage ourselves via a hardbound loop and a forbidden right setup. Through that we proc many cast by damage takens and kill everything, <laughs> basically. Because of one of the flask views, we don't actually take the damage though, but I will explain that later. So the most important part of the build is how do we actually sustain the flasks. We do this by the traitor keystone, which we get from the brutal restraint timeless jewel with the Balbala uh, modifier and the Pathfinder Ascendancy, which gives us three flask charges every three seconds, as well the Flask Mastery, which gives us another charge every three seconds. Then we just increase all those flask charges that we gain enough so that we can sustain the all flask permanently. To do that, we increase the duration of the flask to about 12 seconds, so we need about 90% flask duration, and we need, as I just said, about 100% flask charges gained. In the fifth step down here, I kind of try to visualize how it actually works. So every three seconds we get eight charges and every five seconds we get eight charges as well, which leads us to, four, uh, which leads us to 48 charges in 12 seconds. So we can sustain the flask since we are also reducing the flask charges used from 56 to 44. In practice though, you won't quite need 100% flask charges gained and 90% duration, since the flask has 60 max charges and the traitor ticks every 5 seconds, which doesn't quite overlap with the 12 second duration, so every third time you get more flask charges than you actually need, so it works out. What I would recommend doing is just get the values to about 100% and 90% flask duration, and then pop your flask, sit in your hideout and just check the loop if it keeps working. So to quickly summarize, you have to get the Balbala Jewel, the Flask Mastery, and you have to be an Ascendant, and you have to get about 100% Flask Charges gained and 90% duration. Okay, now that we have established how to permanently sustain Flasks, how do we actually deal damage to ourselves? We do this via a hardbound loop and a cast by damage taking setup with anomalous summon skeletons in there. Since we've established how to permanently sustain Flasks, how do we deal damage to ourselves? We do this via a hardbound loop and a cast when damage taken support with summon skeletons. The summon skeletons gem has to be anomalous so the skeletons don't die too quickly. Now the base duration of the skeletons is 20 seconds. We want to reduce this to the cooldown of the cast when damage taken support. So how it works in practice then is your cast when damage taken support spawn skeletons and they die right after the cast when damage taken um, cooldown is up, so it procs a new round, and a new round, and so on. To reduce those 20 seconds, we have to invest quite a lot into reduced skeleton or reduced skill effect duration. This is an example setup of what you would use. You would use three to dust cobalt jewels with 19% reduced skeleton duration each, an anomalous minion speed support, with 20% quality, which gives us another 40%, so now we have 97% reduced, and a less duration support in the cast by damage taken setup to give us 59% less skill effect duration. On this slide we see how the math actually works out. Now we have 20 seconds and reduce this by 97%, so we have 0.6 seconds, and then with the less duration we bring this down to 0.246 seconds, which is low enough for the loop to work. To start the loop we have to use these spectral spirits weapons which comes from an essence. You just buy two of them, put them in your offhand and you weapon swap. Okay our second source of self damage comes from a forbidden right in a caspin damage taken setup as well. So we can deal even more damage to ourselves to actually proc 21 caspin damage taken gems for our main setups. Forbidden Rite deals 40% of our maximum life as chaos damage to ourselves. This is important, this 40% scales with our chaos resistance, so if we have minus 60%, this 40% gets converted to 64%. Now I will go through an entire example of 
how it all works out in practice. So let's assume we have two hardbound loop rings and we have a summon skeletons that is between I think level 10 and 20 so we only spawn three skeletons. Since we spawn three skeletons we take the damage six times since we have two hardbound loops which means we take 2520 damage. Now to trigger a 21 cast per damage taken gem we need to actually take 3580 damage. So we still need to take another 1060 damage from the forbidden right. Now let's assume we have 2000 base HP and we have to take 1060 damage with forbidden right. That means forbidden right has to deal 53% of our max life. Now to scale the forbidden right damage from 40% to 53% we have to have minus 33% chaos res or even less. All right, so what all of this means is we can now proc a 21 cast one damage taken setup with our ice spear or freezing pulse, for example, in one loop of cast one damage taken. This means in one second, since cast one damage taken has a base cooldown of 0.25 seconds, we cast all our spells four times and it's pew pew. <laughs> All right, now we deal a shit ton of damage to ourselves every second. How do we actually not take it? We use the Flask Aura of Resolve, which has the line Ward does not break during Flask effect. This means as long as we have more Ward than the max hit we take from our self-damaging setups, we never actually take any damage. So if you have 2000 base Ward, every hit will get reduced by this 2000 before it actually hits you. So this is the entire reason why we actually want to sustain flasks permanently and also because it's pretty good. All right, so here's an example of a working Casper damage taken loop setup. You need at least anomalous skeletons level 11. You need level 11 because then you spawn three skeletons. Lower than level 11 and you only spawn two. And at level 21 you spawn four, but that's another calculation in itself. Now to support level 11, skeletons you need your cast when damage taken to be at least level 5 and you need a maximum level of 16 because otherwise the support is too high and you don't take enough damage to keep it looping. You also want your skeleton setup linked to at least a level 19 and 20% quality less duration as well as a 20% quality anomalous minion speed. Your second setup would be forbidden right in a cast damage taken again level 5 to 16 and then you would use your curse in there and something else, something like Righteous Fire. And then you have two main setups, or at least I have two main setups, um, with 21 cast one damage takens in my uh, staff as well as in my chest. But there's a trap. If you use Skin of the Loyal or Skin of the Lords, you increase the level of the cast one damage taken. So you actually only want level 20 if you use a Skin of the Loyal or level 19 if you use Skin of the Lords. Okay, so for the main spells, you can basically use whatever you want. I use Freezing Pulse and Ice Spear. And the reasons are basically listed here. Freezing Pulse has a big single hit to freeze enemies, and Ice Spears then scales with the same damage uh, types as Freezing Pulse. And we can easily scale projectiles. We scale projectiles via a Dying Sun, as well as the Dead Eye Ascendancy, which we get through the new jewels. New jewels. Now, the defenses of the build, I admit, they look pretty weak as you have pretty small numbers, but as you can see in the simulacrum video, you freeze everything permanently except for bosses, and then those like 6k HP that we have in total are good enough for most one-shots, and not good enough if you actually do get hit by, I don't know, a level uh, wave 30 Kosis, but that's just how it is. <laughs> Other than that, the build is immune to all elemental ailments because we are using purity of elements, immune to stun and through bleeds if you have the gear for it. Since we are scaling a bunch of flasks, why do we use survival secrets that actually reduces our flask effect? That is because Allroth's Resolve has 70% less ward during flask effect. That is because Allroth's Resolve has 70% less ward during flask effect. With 20% reduced, we actually reduce this to 56% so we can have more of our original ward. More ward, more tanky. All right, with that the guide is pretty much over and now I'll go into things of how you can improve the build and leveling tips and stuff like that. Now to take the build even further you can get cooldown recovery rate on your belt and on your boots. As you can see from this comment you would want to reach 27% cooldown recovery rate. If you reach that you cast your spells five times every second instead of four times which basically is a 25% more damage multiplier. 
Now, if you reduce the cooldown of your cast damage taken, you also have to reduce the cooldown of your skeletons. And here's an example of how you would do that. Now here's some tech I don't use currently. You can get reduced skill effect duration on the tree to free up one to dust jewel. And why you would, would want to do that is because you are really starved on jewels, uh, for jewels on this build. Okay, I will quickly talk about the gearing of the build. Obviously on your boots, helmet and gloves you just want to get as much ward as possible and get as many resists as you can. I will include a clip of how you can craft ward pieces quite cheaply. Alright, I just wanted to quickly show how I made all my ward items. Basically I always looked for items like this, which I managed to get. The guy came back from being AFK. Uh, if you look here, not AFK, and then he was there. So why this one? Because it has high base ward and it has a bad um, base percentile, the flat ward. And you can easily craft this into a way better one. So first we need a sacred orb and hopefully roll something good. Bam, that's really good. It's already more ward than my current glass. And then you can re-roll the suffixes if you use the new chaos orbs. It reads, if the Eater of Worlds is dominant, re-roll suffix modifiers. I just made it dominant by applying one of its orbs. And now we always re-roll the accuracy and fire res. So now we just hope we hit two res and craft the last one. And we hit a really good one and a fucking low one. But I guess it's still better than my current gloves, and they are amazing. Like 461 ward, and we can craft it to 80 res. It is worth like, yeah, a bunch more. And I just made those for like half an X. That's how you quickly or easily craft ward pieces. Now why am I using a staff in the build? That's because there's a staff mastery that gives you 30% global defense, which scales your max ward. I use the new staff annihilating light because it's cool and deals insane amount of damage. Now for your belt, you definitely want to use a stygian vice to get a corrupting blood jewel. For your chest, you definitely want to use a skin of the lord or skin of the loyal because they both have 100% increased global defenses, which again scales your ward. So this still leaves us with our rings and our amulet. You need to have at least one heartbound loop to deal damage to yourself. Most of you will probably need two, or you will have to use a 21 anomalous summon skeletons. In most setups, that is. The amulet is kind of debatable. Um, I use Eyes of the Great Wolf because it has another 50% increased global defenses. But in theory, you could just get a plus level um, amulet or actually plus level on a talisman with 25% global defenses or you could use omniscience there are many options there are many options but i use eyes of the great wolf for the additional ward now some tips if you want to level the build basically get to level 12 with anything just use life speak gold rim the freeze boots you know the drill what i then did at level 12 you use a poet's pen with arc in it and onslaught and some damage jewel and you attack with Kinetic Bolt, Onslaught and some other damage gems. Later you use Heralds and other spells as I have listed here. I swapped to the Caspel Damage Taken setup at level 69 I think, because that's when you can equip all your ward gear and you have just enough points in the passive tree to make it work. Now for the map mods that you cannot run, you definitely cannot run, players have less cooldown recovery rate as that disaligns your summon skeleton duration from your cooldown on the Caspian damage taken support, so your loop won't work anymore and you just don't loop. <laughs> now the other mod that you shouldn't really run is players gain reduced flask charges, because if you stop killing stuff then your flask will actually run out and you will just die. Right, as I just said, you can run maps with players gain reduced flask charges, but it's not really recommended. The reason why you can run them is obviously because you still kill mobs, so you gain way more charges than you need in a normal map run anyways. 
Oh, it even has delirium. Let's see. Yep. Still alive. But as I said, I wouldn't recommend it. And the reason is if you ever stop killing mobs, you die. Because then your flask runs out. And when your flask runs out, you just kill yourself. Or. I mean, in game. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Now, I just bought the new MTX stuff. Looks really cool in my opinion. Boom. We can uh, almost out damage his healing with Delirium Stacks. Really cool, huh? There's no vermouth boxes you have to avoid. Obviously, you have to avoid them with every build. Or with pretty much every build. But other than that, we are successfully running a map with 50% or even 65% best charges used. Because, as I said, we still kill mobs, so it's not really a problem. I would definitely not recommend running the mod though on a Guardian map or any map with a tough boss. Or if you're trying to do some recipes from the league mechanic. Because you're gonna sit around and waste time and not kill something and then you'll just damage yourself so much that your character goes to zero HP. Nice. Wait, what? 70 splinters? What oh, that easy map? Okay, dude. See, now I'm just sitting around here. Uh, I should really just kill more mobs. But I think I proved the point. You can run reduced flash, flash charges. Yeah, that's it. Now, if you have any further questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, and I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Thanks.